Follow the Star is now on. Hey, what's up, everybody? A few weeks ago, I started a series entitled, I'm in the fight of my life. Truth be told, many of you feel that way, regardless of your ethnic background, economical background, your race, your gender, your creed, or even your color. Many of us feel as if we are in the fight of our lives. If you feel this way, I guarantee you, this word is getting ready to bless your life. There's a familiar passage of scripture in Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3. Open your Bibles, turn there really quickly. It reads thus wise, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate both day and night. And he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of waters that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he does shall prosper. As I stated aforetime, many of us feel like we are in the fight of our lives. For some of us, the fight's inside of our home. For some of us, the fight's in our marriage. For many of us, the fight is in the relationship with our children. For many of us, the fight is on our job. For many of us, the fight is a sickness inside of our bodies. Whatever the fight is that you are fighting at this particular moment in time, the Word of God declares in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 58, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. You don't have to pray for victory. You already have victory. I want you to know right now, your victory is not in your strategy, but your victory is in your Savior. I'm going to say it again. Your victory is not in your strategy, but your victory is in your Savior. I'm victorious not because I've crossed every T, not because I've dotted every I, not because I've always said the right thing or done the right thing, but I am victorious simply because I have a relationship with Jesus the Christ who has already overcome the world. Hey, listen, we've been talking about the idea that when two boxers get into a fight, in order for the boxer to win the fight of his life when he steps inside of the ring, he has to trim the fat. He has to get his body in shape and in order to get his body in shape, it is absolutely imperative that he trims the fat. Trimming the fat requires two things. The first thing that it requires is healthy eating. The second thing that it requires is rigorous exercise. The boxer does not wait until the night before the fight to eat right. He does not wait until the night before the fight to start exercising, but he makes up inside of his mind long before he ever steps inside of the ring. I've got to change my eating habits and I've got to put my body through strenuous physical activity called exercise. Many of us are in the fight of our lives and we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Your fight is not your spouse, it is not your husband, it is not your wife, it is not your child, it is not your boss, it is not your co-worker. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but Paul the Apostle said in Ephesians chapter number 6, verses 10 through 18, that we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Our fight is Satan himself. Stop getting mad at people and start getting mad at Satan. But if we are going to win the fight of our lives, you cannot defeat Satan when you are spiritually out of shape. In order for us to get in shape spiritually, we must trim the fat, which requires us, number one, to eat right. When I eat right, I hear God's word. 
Number two, I have to exercise. When I exercise, I heed God's word. In other words, I come to church in order to hear God's word, and I leave the church in order to put God's word into practice. It is only when I hear God's word and heed God's word that I'm able to trim the fat inside of my life to be in the best shape possible in order to win the fight of my life. But the second thing that I want to talk to you about on today is not just trimming the fat. You got to have the right person inside of your corner. I'm going to say it again. You got to have the right person inside of your corner. Make me say it till I'm blue in the face. I'm going to say it again. You got to have the right person inside of your corner. Many of us are not winning the fight of our lives, not because we are not in shape, not because we have not trimmed the fat, but many of us are not winning the fight of our lives because you don't have the right people inside of your corner. What happens when the very people inside of your corner who are supposed to be encouraging you, who are supposed to be inspiring you, who are supposed to be pushing you to the next level and reminding you that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, who are supposed to be reminding you that greater is he that's in you than he that's inside of the world. What happens when those very people are envious of you and jealous of you because they don't realize what it takes to walk a mile inside of your shoes and those same people who should be pushing you to the top are trying to pull you back down to the bottom. I need you to high five your neighbor and tell your neighbor you must have the right person inside of your corner. I'm going to give you a minute to say it. Tell them again, you got to have the right person inside of your corner. Have you not considered that when two boxers step into the rings, they do not fight the whole fight? but they have three minute increments called rounds. When the round is over, they go to their corner and who's inside of their corner is very important to the boxer winning the fight. When the Lord gave me this word this morning, I almost ran out of the room. The Lord said to me, Thomas, think about it. In a boxing match, they don't fight the whole fight, but they fight in three minute increments called rounds. At the end of each round, the bell rings and they walk to the corner. And one thing that gets a boxer in trouble is when they mistake the fight for being over, when in actuality, they are just between rounds. And many of us are just like the boxer. You mistake your fight for being over when in actuality, you are just in between rounds. You think that the fight is over because it's peaceful right now. You think that the fight is over because it's not rough right now. You think that the fight is over because it's not tough right now. But sometimes you can go through periods of peace. Sometimes you can go through periods of calmness. Sometimes you can go through periods of things being smooth. And the Lord told me to speak to somebody who came to the start of day from the east side, somebody who came from the west side, from the north side, from the south side. God wants you to know, never mistake your fight for being over when in actuality, you are just between rounds. The Bible declares in James chapter number four, verse seven, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Which says to all of us that the devil will flee, but guess what, he's coming back. Never mistake your fight for being over when in actuality, you are just between rounds. We thank God for giving us those periods of being in between rounds because it is in those periods that God allows us to go to the corner. And when we go to the corner, you gotta have the right person. Who does a boxer have inside of his corner? Number one, every boxer has a coach. Number two, every boxer has a cut man. Have you not considered that the, that the responsibility of a coach is to give the boxer pointers and the responsibility of the cut man is to provide protection for the boxer. I'm gonna say it again. The coach in the corner gives pointers, which are instructions on what the boxer can do better, what the boxer needs to look for, the tactics of the enemy that the boxer is facing at that particular moment in time. But watch this, the cut man provides protection. When you are in the fight, sometimes you get hit, sometimes you get bruised, sometimes you get cut. 
Sometimes your eyes swell up, and it is the cut man that rubs Vaseline on your eyes. It is the cut man that pours water on your head to make sure that you don't dehydrate in order to send you back into the ring. Have you not considered the first person, even before we talk about physical people, who needs to be inside of your corner? God needs to be inside of your corner. I can't say it enough. I'm going to say it again. God needs to be inside of your corner. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor this question. Is God inside of your corner? I need you to ask him one more time. Is God inside of your corner? You will never win the fight of your life if you're fighting without God. Listen, God does not just want to be with you, but God wants to be in you. When Jesus came to earth, they called him Emmanuel. And watch this, Emmanuel means God with us. But on the day of Pentecost, when Jesus ascended back into heaven after his death, his burial, and his resurrection, he sent the Holy Spirit. He sent the Comforter. And Emmanuel is God with us, but the Holy Spirit is God inside of us. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is your coach. He provides pointers inside of the Word of God in order to help you win the fight. Not only is he your coach, he's also your cut man. He provides protection in order to send you back inside of the fight. I'm going to say it again. If God is in your corner, that means that the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you. And I want you to know that the filling of the Holy Spirit is not a one-time thing. It's a continual thing. When you fill your car up with gas and you leave the gas station, you don't fill it up one time. But watch this. When you leave, your gauge starts going down and it gets to halfway full. Then you go back to the gas station and you fill it back up. Likewise, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, Life hits us. It drains our spirit. So every day I'm praying, God, I need you to fill me with your spirit. God, I need you to fill me with your anointing. God, I need you to baptize me in your Holy Spirit. And watch this. God begins to fill me back up. And as he fills me back up, I'm in tune with the Holy Spirit. He gives me pointers inside of his word in order to win the fight of my life. But he also provides protection from his word in order for me to win the fight of my life. So the first question that I want to ask to everybody who happens to be in the fight of your life is who's inside of your corner? If you're going to win the fight of your life, you got to reassess who's inside of your corner. Before we can talk about who needs to be in your corner, let's talk about who should not be in your corner. I'm going to say it again. Before we can talk about who needs to be in your corner, let's talk about who should not be inside of your corner. It's found inside of the scripture that we just read, Psalms 1, verse number 1. It reads thus wise, blessed is the man, happy is the man, blessed is the woman, happy is the woman who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. The ungodly is anybody who ignores God, nor stands in the way of sinners. A sinner is anybody who does not know God, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. The scornful is anybody who mocks God. So watch this. What that says to all of us is that the people who ignore God have no business being inside of our corners. The people who don't know God have no business being inside of our corners. The people who mock God and take him for granted have no business being inside of our corners. Have you not considered that to win the fight of your life, you got to reassess who's inside of your corner. And before you can get the right folk in your corner, you got to get the wrong folk out of your corner. I think I struck a nerve with somebody. I'm going to say it again. Before you can get the right folk in your corner, you got to get the wrong people outside of your corner. Sometimes you got to put some folk out of your life before the right people God will send inside of your life. It's not that I'm trying to be mean. It's not that I'm trying to be rude. It's not that I'm trying to be stuck up. It's not that I think that I'm better than somebody else, but we are not headed in the same direction. And sometimes before God can send the right folk in your life, you got to remove the wrong people out of your life. Anybody 
who ignores God, anybody who mocks God, anybody who does not know God, does not need to be inside of your corner when you find yourself in the fight of your life. Now that we know who doesn't need to be in your corner, the question has to be raised, who needs to be inside of my corner? Who needs to be on my team? Who needs to be in my corner when I'm getting beat up? Who needs to be in my corner when the enemy has thrown his best punch, his best shot inside of my marriage, his best shot in the relationship with my children, his best shot on my job, and he's thrown a shot so hard and so tough that I feel like quitting, but I thank God that, that he'll put somebody inside of my corner that when I feel like giving up and throwing in the towel, they will catch the towel and throw it right back to me. So now that you know who doesn't need to be in your corner, question has to be raised, who must be inside of your corner? It's right there inside of the scripture. Open your Bibles, turn to Psalms 1, verse number 2. After the psalmist tells us who should not be in your corner, he tells us who should be in your corner. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. His happiness, his desire is in the word of God. And in his law, in his word, does he meditate both day and day and night. For you to have the right people inside of your corner, you need the word in your corner and people who are in the word in your corner. I'm going to say it again. You need the word in your corner and people who are in the word inside of your corner. I did not say the world because many of us have the world in our corner and we still lose in a fight. Just because they are in the world does not mean that they are in the word. I don't need the world in my corner. I need the word in my corner. And I need some folk who are inside of the word, inside of my corner. I need some people who don't mind going to Bible study. I need some people who don't mind getting up and going to church on Sunday morning. I need some people who are not just in the word on Sunday and Wednesday, but I need some people who understand that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I need some people who know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I need some people who know that we are to desire the sincere milk of the word that we might be able to grow. I don't need the world in my corner. I need the word and folk who are inside of the word, inside of my corner. The psalmist says in Psalms 1, verse number 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, in the word of God, and in his word does he meditate both day and night. You're looking at me crazy like Pastor Beavers. What does it mean to meditate? And even when I find out what it means to meditate, I don't know how to meditate. The devil is a liar. If you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. The only thing you got to do is switch your focus. God Almighty, I need you to high five somebody and tell them real quick, I need you to switch your focus. Tell them again, tell them again, tell them again. I need you to switch your focus. Yeah, you got to switch your focus. Instead of you thinking about your problems all day long, you got to start thinking about the word all day long. When you think about the word, you wake up in his word. You go to bed in his word. You go throughout your day inside of his word. I dare you to just pick up your Bible right now, put it on the floor, put your smartphone, put your app on the floor. I dare you to open up your Bible, stand on top of your Bible, put your feet over your Bible. If it's your smartphone, don't step on it and break it, but I need you to just stand on your Bible real quick. I know you're sitting down, but I need you to get up off of your seat, and I need you to stand on your Bible. You don't even realize the only reason you have not gone crazy, the only reason you have not gone postal, the only reason you have not lost your mind when you had a legal and a logical reason to do so in the middle of the fight of your life when Satan threw his best shot is because you are standing on the word. If you're going to have the right people inside of your corner, be seated, it's just Bible study, you got to have the word and folk who are inside of the word Inside of your corner, the question has to be raised, what are the benefits to me of having the word and people inside of the word in my corner? I'm glad you asked. Benefit number one, according to Psalms 1, verse number three, it is the word of God in your corner 
and people who are in the word of God who are in your corner, who plant you and cause you to be productive even when you are in the middle of the fight of your life. Let me say it again. Somebody just missed it. It is the word of God in your corner and people who are inside of the word of God in your corner who plant you and cause you to be productive when you are in the middle of the fight of your life. Psalms 1, verse number 3. And he shall be like a tree when you meditate on the word both day and night. You'll be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. I'm in the fight of my life. The fight of my life, Satan is trying to use it to uproot me. He's trying to uproot me from my faith. He's trying to uproot me from my faith community. He's trying to uproot me from my family, uproot me from my marriage. He's trying to uproot me from my church. He's trying to uproot me from my job. But guess what? It is the word that plants me and it is the word that causes me to be productive when I find myself in the middle of the fight of my life. And he shall be like a tree. She shall be like a tree when I meditate on the word of God both day and night. Day and night. When it's sunshine outside, when it's dark outside, when I can see my way, when I can't see my way, meditate on his word. Think about his word both day and night. And it makes me like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Satan wants to use this fight to uproot you, but he can't uproot you because it's the word in my corner that's planting me, planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in its season. So not only is the tree planted, but because the tree is planted, the tree is also productive. There's no way for you to be productive if you are not planted. This is the reason I can't miss church. This is the reason I can't miss Sunday. This is the reason I can't miss Wednesday. This is the reason I don't just go from church to church. I got to plant myself in a local assembly. I got to plant myself in a local fellowship. This is the reason I don't just read the word on Sunday and Wednesday, but every single morning before I start my day, I wake up and the word is my breakfast. Michael Jordan said, eat your Wheaties, but God is saying, eat the word. Somebody just missed it. I'm going to say it again. Michael Jordan said, eat your Wheaties, but, but God is saying, eat the word, because it is the word that plants you when Satan's trying to uproot you, when you find yourself and the enemy is taking his best shot, and you're in the middle of the fight of your life. Not only does it plant me, but I, I bring forth my fruit in its season, which means that I'm also productive. Being planted and being productive goes hand in hand. I cannot be productive if I'm not planted. But the second thing that has to take place, watch this. When the word is in my corner, question has to be raised. How does the word in my corner and folk who are in the word who are in my corner benefit me? Number two, when the word is in my corner and people who are in the word are in my corner, it benefits me because the psalmist says, in Psalms 1, verse number 3, it is the word and folk who are in the word that causes me to persevere. And it is the word and folk who are in the word that causes me to prosper. I'm going to say it again. It's the word and folk who are in the word that makes me persevere. It's the word and folk who are in the word that causes me to prosper. You don't have to wait until the fight of your life is over to have perseverance. To have prosperity, God wants you to have it right now. I need you to high-five your neighbor and tell him right now. God Almighty, I feel something getting ready to shift. I need you to high-five your neighbor again and tell him right now. Yeah, I don't want no pie in the sky by and by. I want some cake on the ground while I'm still around. High-five him one more time and tell him right now. When you got the word in your corner, folk who are in the word inside of your corner, Guess what? Causes you to persevere and prosper. He'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. Here it is. Psalms 1 verse number 3. His leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. His leaf, talking about the leaf that is on this branch that is connected to this tree that is planted by the rivers of water. It's all connected. His leaf shall not wither. 
One thing that I know about leaves is that they blossom and wither away according to the time of year and the season that it is at this particular moment in time. Guess what? In the fall and the winter, leaves wither away and die. But in the spring and the summer, they blossom, they turn colorful, and they look good on the tree. What God is saying to all of us is that when you got the word and folk who are in the word inside of your corner, it does not matter what season of life you find yourself in, you won't persevere. It does not matter what season of life you find yourself in, you will outlast your season before your season outlasts you. Last but not least, it says whatever you do, because you got the word in your corner, and you got folk who are in the word in your corner. You got the coach, watch this, giving you pointers, and the cut man giving you protection. It says, whatever you do shall prosper. Somebody shout, I am prosperous. Prosperity ain't a cuss word in the church. I need you to say it again. I am prosperous. Yeah, the literal meaning of the word prosperity, it means to go through or to go over. It does not mean that I don't have problems. It does not mean that I'm not in a fight. But it literally means that when I prosper, I'm able to go through my problems or to go over my problems. Which says to all of us, I got problems, but I'm still prosperous. You don't know how prosperous you are until you are faced with the fight of your life. And what God is saying to all of us, not only must you trim the fat, but after you trim the fat, you got to make sure that you have the right folk inside of your corner. When you go to the corner, never mistake your fight for being over just because you in between rounds. It ain't over. It might be calm right now, but he's coming back. But you got to be prepared when he comes back. And the way for you to be prepared is when you go to your corner, you got to have the right folk. Folk who are in the word. You got to have the word inside of your corner. It'll give you pointers, but it'll also give you protection. It will plant you, it will make you productive, it will cause you to persevere, and it will cause you to prosper. God bless you as you win the fight of your life. You are already victorious. Stand to your feet.